Everybody said I shouldn't become a full-time blogger because it's not a real job, there's no money, it's not a profession, it's not professional. Um, but I did it anyway because I don't care what people think. <laughs> I like to be happy and my most important goal in life is to be happy and blogging makes me happy, so that's why I do it. It's Nessie Anderson here with a brand new episode of the Pathless Travel Series. Now today's guest is image consultant, blogger, writer, and style and beauty expert, Danielle Gray. Woo! -hoo! Now you're like, Danielle Gray? I don't know her by that name. <laughs> well, you probably know her as the style and beauty doctor, of course. A name derived from her award-winning blog, thestyleandbeautydoctor.com. Now let me give you the rundown on the blog, okay? It is a fun and resourceful guide for fashion and style and beauty for women of all ages, sizes, and races. Danielle, you she, she writes a little bit, you know? <laughs> you maybe read something from her, um, let's say, Cosmopolitan magazine. How about hype hair? What about Essence? You like Essence? I know you like Essence. <laughs> Danielle, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I feel like I need to be introed like every day. That's yes, like such you know. a self-esteem booster. Yes, like. you get it, you get it, you, you know. I need to record this and then have that as my alarm when I wake up. <laughs> you can work that out. Yes, yes. So I just want to like jump right into things. Tell me about, number one, let's, let's start all the way from the beginning. Okay. Your decision to leave your 10 years in finance mm -hmm. to pursue a career in the beauty and fashion industry. Yeah, okay, so everybody thinks it's like such this like, oh my God, you're so brave, I can't believe you did, but just like how you said, it took 10 years. Yes. <laughs> so it, it was funny, so um, the way it actually happened, it was um, right after Columbus Day weekend, so that Monday we had off from, from work, and I got back into the office and I'm like, on the Tuesday, and I'm like, why am I still here? So like I was in like a text group with um, two other friends who also happen to be bloggers. I'm like, you know, what? I think I'm really going to quit this job because at the time I was a business specialist. So I would work with um, a lot of the business clientele. Um, I worked in an area where it was really intense. You had intense sales goals. Um, around that time was when they were kind of trying to um, let go a lot of people because oh. they had the whole subprime mortgage thing that went. Oh. And I'm like, Okay, I keep seeing people getting let go. And there were times when I'd be like, please let me let, get let go too. Because they were giving good severance packages. Okay. But unfortunately, fortunately, I was good at my job, so they kept me. But yeah. anyway, so I'm sitting there like, why am I still here? So I got on the computer and I typed up my resignation letter. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't even give it to my boss until like the end of the week because I was so nervous and so scared. Yeah. But that wasn't even like the first time I've ever quit a job. Yeah. But this was the first time I'd be quitting to, you know, pursue my blog full time. Right. So I finally mustered up the courage. I gave the letter to my boss. And like I said, I've quit jobs before. Yeah. This was like the best job quitation. I know I just made up a word. Yeah. But it was like the best time that I've ever quit, the best experience I've ever had quitting a job, because he goes, you know what? I can see you doing well in fashion. Oh, that's and beauty. awesome. And he's like, you, I'm going to miss you here. You did a great job here. But, you know, I think it, it's really great that you're following your dreams. It's pretty much what he said. Yeah. And I'm like, I was sitting there like, because usually you, you quit a job and people are like bitter, like, yeah. oh, you ain't going to find another job. Like, Seriously. you know, we can find somebody like, better than you. Yeah. Yeah. So. It was just really, it just really, really felt really great to have him, you know, give me that, that blessing, that okay. Um, I didn't tell my family. <laughs> I didn't tell my family until it was my last day at work. And I was okay. like, oh yeah, by the way, I quit my job. Oh my goodness. They were, fr <laughs> they were probably freaking out because they're Caribbean. Yes. Okay. And Caribbean people, unless you're like a doctor, a lawyer, a banker, yep. a, a this, a that, a, a, the third, and you know, something else on the weekend too. It's yeah. like, they don't understand like blog, like what is yeah. this blogging thing? Like, we you, you lazy? Like yeah. get off your bind and, and go out and work. Yeah. Um, it took a while and that first year was rough. One of the main things that you have to prepare yourself for is the money part because right. it, it, it can be pretty tough. And it was rough Yeah. that first year. like. 
rough. Like there were times when I needed to go and network with people and I'm like, it's really important for me to network, but I'm like, I don't know if I have enough to pay for like my plate to eat. Yeah. Um, to even go to some of these meetings. So I had to, it, it was rough. Wow. Like I, I couldn't shop, I couldn't do anything. I had a lot of freelance jobs. I, um, at the time was working at Estee Lauder as a makeup okay. artist. Um, and later on I was freelancing at Mac as a makeup artist. So it's like a lot of different things that, that kind of put the puzzle together yeah. you know, for the first year or two. Yeah. And then things started to get better, so. I think that's an, uh, important for a lot of people to hear because they think that you just quit your job and, and it's everything okay. is fabulous. And it's like, oh, I'm going to jet off to Paris yeah. and, you know, the South and, you know, all this other stuff. And it's like, you no. got to be in it for the long run. It is not for the faint of heart. No. This, is, not this at has all. to be something that's like your passion and you believe in yourself because you can't make other people believe in you if you right. don't believe in you. Exactly. exactly. So did you always have a passion for like beauty and fashion? Because you did go to school for marketing. Yeah. I went to I went to Hofstra, I got a degree in marketing. The fashion thing kind of started, I always tell people that because from way, way from kindergarten until like my high school year, I went to Catholic school. So it was okay. uniforms. So in high school, you know, we got a little bit of a leeway, like you could wear your own shirt. Yeah. But you had to wear like so the, the uniform skirt, skirt or the yeah. pants. So as soon as I got to college, which is another reason why I ran into a lot of debt, <laughs> um, I'm like, oh my God, I can wear my own clothes so like I can express myself, I can do this, I can do that, I can do the third. And from there, I really got into like the fashion aspect. Um, and it was funny, the day that I was uh, lining up to graduate and walk out, um, you know, march out, whatever you call it, at Hofstra, I overheard two girls talk and they're like, yeah, you know, what are you gonna do after graduation? Right. And one girl was like, I don't know, I think I'm gonna go to like FIT and and I'm thinking to myself like, me too. Yeah. So I looked up FIT and I saw that they had a styling course. So I took okay. the first styling class um, and the teacher was this wonderful stylist named Sadia Seymour, who I still like, keep in touch Shout with Shout out now. to him. <laughs> to her, to her, her. yeah. Sorry, Sadi, Sadi girl. <laughs> she's, she's um, amazing, but from what I learned in that styling class was that I did not want to be a stylist because there's a lot incorporated with, um, you know, having to buy clothes and return and budgets and things like that. And it's right. not, it's not easy. It's not, as, it's not glamorous. No, it's definitely not. So then I realized then that what was more my speed was image consulting because then with image consulting, you're more working with like a corporate um, clientele or, you know, you're going in someone's closet. It's more personal. Right. Whereas styling, it's like you get hired maybe by a brand or you're doing some stuff to build your book and, you know, right. so on and so forth. Um, I felt like the image consulting was like more my speed. Right. So I took um, a certificate uh, coursework in that and got that understanding and then combined that with what I knew. My mom was always a beauty queen. Yes. She had her red lipstick and everything on okay, in the 80s mom. and whatever, you know. <laughs> so I always had like that makeup background, even though I didn't start really wearing makeup until I was like 22. So what would you say you did to deliberately brand yourself in this space? Because there's so many people that want to be bloggers or call yeah. themselves bloggers so it's kind of hard to like stand out or yeah. cause a space for your own well you know what sometimes you got to look at what everyone else is doing i know some people don't want to do that because they don't want to be accused of, of copying or you know being but we all get inspiration from you know from some place so you right. look at what other people are doing because although one thing i love about blogging is there's no formula to it although there is a formula to it but there's not a formula to it and hopefully what i'm saying is going to make that make sense um, because, I mean, there is a formula to blogging. There's, you know, being consistent and having great images, having um, consistent content and having relevant content for your audience. Right. Um, but at the same time, you can do it however you want to. Like, um, me, I always wanted to have my personality come through oh, in my does. right. Oh, it does. <laughs> I love it though. It's very personable. I love it. Yeah, because the thing is, when I worked in finance, a lot of my clientele would be like, you are a little too much personality yeah, to put, yeah. not too much, but, but like you have like, so much personality to be working in a bank. Like I love yeah. it, but it's like, you need to like, yeah. so yeah. yeah. So I always wanted my personality to shine through. I always, I like to help people. Um, so anytime when, you know, I try to answer as many emails and reply to as many comments as possible, like social media and the internet, it is social media and the internet, but at the same time, it's like there's a person behind the person that's leaving these comments. Mm -hmm. Because it's really easy to just say, oh my God, this lipstick is the bomb, like you need to get it. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, the person who's reading this, 
has a budget, yeah. works hard for their money, and yeah. you know, I gotta keep that in mind when you know I'm really writing these reviews and, and whatever it is that I'm writing. Right. And at the same time, I don't wanna bore people, because you can get a little boring with that. That's true, but not what you're writing, though. Not I try not to be boring, <laughs> yeah. but you know, it's like, because sometimes it gets a little technical. It's like, oh, well, this is a blue red with a matte finish, and this is a orange red with a glossy finish. But right. it's like, you know, these are things that people need to know. Right. But then you try to find a lively way to, you know, present that information right so I think so you deliberately brand yourself by being thoughtful of your audience mm -hmm. and then also staying true to who you are staying true to that's the number one thing because people yeah. can read through BS they, yeah they really can I love it this is why I love you so much because you're just, <laughs> you're you. just awesome I feel like you I feel like you care I you do know, the I fact do that care. you take the time to like write back to people just even in the way that you write your reviews you're like oh you know I see you on snap sometime you're like you know what it's a little gloomy outside so I'm not gonna take pictures today yeah. like you're just really yeah thoughtful and I try to read <laughs> there's like a method behind that madness because it's great to hear feedback and to hear from the you know the people that read your blog and, right um but sometimes people would would like have unrealistic expectations right. of me and i'd have to say like yo it's just me yeah. <laughs> like it's just me like these pictures i'm taking them right and so it's like a lot of times people would say well why can't you do this and why can't you do that and why don't you do it this way and this and that and the third so i'm like you know this snapchat thing is a really great tool because now i can show people like you know a little bit of the behind the scenes and what it takes to you know pull off some of the stuff that i you know try to pull off right so what would you say is one thing that most people don't know about your journey to where you are now it's a lot of work i'm not like the, the a coder or anyone that like you know knows that kind of stuff and it's just that you know a lot of the stuff I learned on my own, like I went to Google, Google, mm -hmm. <laughs> and looked things up and um, research and try to find out like the best way that I would be able to, um, you know, do things. And it's a lot of work. Like, yeah. Like people think like, oh, you know, you get lipsticks for free all the time. That's so glamorous. And it's like, it comes at a cost and there's, right. you know, there's work, like real work behind it. And right. even sometimes with my family, like in the winter time, one thing that's really great about blogging is that I don't, I don't have to be in one specific area. Okay. So like in the winter time during the holidays, I like to spend some time with my family. I stay there right. maybe two weeks, three weeks. I noticed that even they didn't really understand because my sister would like I'd you know be on my laptop doing you know whatever I needed to do, and my sister would be like, "Oh, can you go get your nephew from?" And I'm like, but "Yes, I, I'm working." Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's it's an adjustment for everyone, and I live in a neighborhood where there are a lot of like elderly people. Yeah. So I don't. Oh, they concerned. quite understand. They're like, I have this one neighbor that was like, well, what do you do? <laughs> and it's kind of hard to explain, right. especially to someone who's not like internet savvy. Yeah. But the thing that drove the point home for them is I was in the Essence Mag, in the Essence, because you oh. know in our neighborhood it's the Essence. Yes. So I was in the Essence in December. And they were like, oh my God, that's the girl from over there. Yes. She's in the essence and yes. oh, I'm so proud. You're probably on their wall, on their fridge. Right. On so the like, coffee table. Like, yeah, she looks up to this, you know? Right, right. <laughs> so it's like stuff like that that like quantifies like my success. Yeah. For, you know, people that don't even know me. Wow. <laughs> So what would you say is your last career low mm -hmm. and how did you bounce back from that? Because I think it's very important for people to know that you are going to have career lows, mm -hmm. many of them. Yes. But, uh, you know, you'll bounce back. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. You know, you got to yeah. be a fighter. When I was in my uh, mid-20s and they call it the, uh, what is it, quarter life crisis? Yeah. They call that the quarter life crisis <laughs> for a reason because it's a crisis. <laughs> Because it seemed as if, like, I was like, I don't know what I want to do. I wasn't, like, fulfilled with the job that I was working. It seemed like all of my friends were like, I'm uh, getting my master's from Columbia and Harvard yeah. and Yale. And I'm like, I'm at home with my mom, like, yeah. just chilling. <laughs> like, you know, I work at a bank. Yeah. <laughs> and I just felt, like, depressed a lot, you know? Like, right. I don't know what I want to do. And then I would try so many times because I have my degree in marketing. Right. But because I didn't do any marketing internships when I was in college, I, went, I was working at a bank when I was in college. Right. By the time I graduated, I, um, marketing, starting marketing jobs were way less than what I was making part-time at the bank. What? So I was like, I'm gonna get this money. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what happened then is I had all of this financial experience right. and sales experience, but I didn't have a lot of marketing experience. I would try to shift gears and it, it didn't really pan out. 
And every time I would go in an interview and not get called back, it was just like, you know, another blow. And it was just like, oh my God, this is so much. And yeah. like all my other friends were having all of these like, they're getting to be lawyers and doctors and all sort of stuff. And I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. Which is okay because, you know, you do eventually get through it. Yeah. And I do have those times now where I, like, even with blogging, I mean, people think, like, I'm successful or whatever. Um, you know, everyone has their different definitions of success. Right. But there's times now where I'm like, oh, my God, like, what am I doing? I should be doing more. And that's the reason why, like, things like Instagram and whatnot can yeah. be the devil. Because yes. then you look at somebody else's thing and you're like, oh, well, she's doing so much better than I am. Yeah. And you kind of have to, like, get yourself out of that. Like, yeah. step away from the phone, go outside, walk, go off a jog, go to the gym, like, clear your head and, you know. Right. Yeah, so. So when those marketing things, you know, those jobs weren't working out for you, what did you do? I cried. Yeah, no, they <laughs> I cried. That's I real. Cried. I feel like everybody go, ha, goes through yeah. that moment. And I would be in a funk for like a week, two weeks. And nobody understands. Nobody no, understands. Like nobody understands. And then I would psych myself into it. I'd be like, all right, Danielle. All right, all right. Yeah. So we got this debt. We're going to pay it off. This bank job pays you some good money. We're just going to stay there for another two years or three years or whatever it is. We're going to get through it. And, you know, and then I would give myself like these pep talks. And that would work for a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, I'd be like. Back to kicking rocks and yeah. <laughs> buckets and things, but it, it's it's hard. It's yeah. hard. And then the thing that um, <laughs> the thing that kind of kept me grounded was not dating like at all. Mm. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying that's the best thing to do because I'm suffering for it now. <laughs> but um, for me, because a lot of times, like at that age, I was, I'm 33 now. In case anybody was wondering, mm -hmm. at that age, like in your tw in your mid 20s or whatever, it's like. I would get into a relationship and then like throw everything into like, oh my God, I gotta be with him, I have to be with him. Yeah. And then I would mess me up where I'm like, yeah. I gotta go to work in the morning. Yeah. So when I decided to, you know, go full time, I was like, I'm gonna like tune out the guys and just focus on, you know, my, my business. Yeah, I think that's important. But I'm not saying it works for everyone. I think it's important but. for a lot of people to know to have the, just like your priorities yeah, in check. Yeah. You know, there's always opportunity costs, but I feel as though these days, you know, we all want to be loved. We all want to be in a relationship, but I feel like right. you have to be okay with yourself and you have yes. to be able to add something to that relationship once right. you get into it. And that's, 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 that's the golden ticket. <laughs> yeah. So what would you say is a career moment that you're still waiting for? You've had so much success, as you say, <laughs> how do you define success? Happiness. Yeah, but see, that's why we say that you're successful. But people think of success as like, oh my gosh, she's making all of this money or she, you know, she's wearing designer clothes and this and that and the third, yeah. like, Okay, that's cool. You yeah. know, I'm not trying to say like I wouldn't, you know, want some designer stuff. I just can't afford it. Yeah. But um, to me, it's like being happy. Yeah. Really, really being happy. And I'm really happy now. And yeah. that's my key to, that's my definition of success. Yeah, happiness. that's what makes me gravitate. Another thing I gravitate to you for a lot of reasons. You're just a great ball of energy. Thank and you. All that stuff. But I feel as though like, you know, like it takes a lot of courage to follow your heart, to it follow does. your passion. It does. Especially, because I'm from a West Indian background too, okay? My parents are Jamaican, my family's Jamaican. And so this is kind of like why I started this series. It's because if you are not a doctor, teacher, lawyer, mm -hmm. it's just like, well, like what, what, are you, what are you doing? Exactly. Leroy, you're too lazy, get up and go do something. Exactly. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to like create this platform so that people know that you don't have to be, like you can follow your heart and not be starving. You know, these yes. people are successful, they're not living off of crumbs. You right. know, they're happy. I mean, you know, I was for crumbs in the beginning, yeah, but, you but know, it's like, it gets better. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you say is like a moment that you're still waiting for? I would love to have a line. I don't know what the line is going to be, if it's clothes, if it's makeup. I would love for it to be makeup, mm -hmm. but a, something, something yeah. that is uh, me, something yeah. that the people who follow me would love and yeah. would love to have. So I'm, I'm working on that. It's in. It's like it's, okay. the gears are turning. When you say that, I think that'd be great. Immediately, what pops into mind is Tyra. You know, she came out with her own beauty line. Yes, yes. I feel like what you would do would be something in that vein because it's not the typical beauty line. You know, mm -hmm. it's like mascara and pencils that do tips and tricks. You know, mm -hmm. double-sided things and a smudge fixer and all that stuff. Yes. I feel like that's because you're like a girl on the go and you know yeah. you can think with your viewers and audience in mind. Yeah. You know, you want to make life easier. You want to go half. You know, seriously. <laughs> Let's make that happen. So speaking 
of your viewers and your audience, how do you use social media strategically to further develop your brand? Well, you know, you gotta hang out with the people or with the kids. Well, not the kids. But <laughs> I'm, well, I say kids like, you know, like colloquially, like, yeah. not like you people are kids. Um, you gotta hang out with the people are, where the cool people are. And the cool people are on, they're on Instagram, they're on Twitter, they're on Facebook, they're on Snapchat, they're on Periscope. Um, you gotta find ways to, you know, make relevant content that people can relate to. Um, well, it's funny because it's like, you, I, I just said that things that people can relate to. I'm yeah. just myself and yeah. then I hope that people relate to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you gotta post at, at the times when people are getting up and right. the people are going to lunch and, and, you know, things like that. Like, you have to be very strategic about timing, um, knowing what your audience likes to see and, you know, being able to talk about certain topics and, and right. things of that nature and, you know, you just gotta be, I mean, sometimes you, you just you know, throw it in the air and then sometimes it sticks and then sometimes it fails and oh well, if it fails then you just try something else. <laughs> yeah. I think your authenticity is like the, 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 the core of your success. Because on all your social, if you're yourself, because you know how people say like you gotta be yourself because it's a lie that if you if you're not it's a lie that you continuously have to keep up especially mm -hmm. with all these new emerging social media platforms it's right. like you gotta pretend to be somebody all the time right but in every social platform that you have i feel like there's like a different experience but it's always you you know mm -hmm. it's, and the, the fact that it's you and it's you're you're being yourself it allows everything to come together nicely no matter if you're on youtube or snapchat you're doing a good job thank you're you. doing thank a good you. job I, try. <laughs> I have these visions in my head and you know, I don't have, um, you know, a budget to do it. So I'm like, well, what can I do that I can afford? And yeah. what can I, like, what's the highest quality that I can get without having to, you know, go broke? So. Yeah. And I feel like social media, for the most part, I mean, of course, they have, like, those paid campaigns and stuff. But it's mm -hmm. free. So right. if you're not using Twitter, Facebook, and all that other right, stuff. Right, right. Like, I don't understand. Bruh. 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 So speaking of social media, <laughs> yes. uh, we asked. Some fans okay. questions via Instagram to see what they wanted to know about you. Okay. Okay, so Miss Lise underscore Marie wants to know what was your process for deciding on the name of your blog and the design for it? When I started the blog, I was like, I wanted something to be the same name as the business because initially when I started the blog, it was to attract um, image consulting clients. Mm -hmm. And it, the name was my Urban Glamour blog because someone else had um, whatever the other variation was, Urban Glamour blog or whatever it was. Okay. Um, so that was the name of the blog for like a year and a half. Um, but then my tagline was always um, Urban Glamour, um, I'm your personal style and beauty doctor, something like that. Yeah. Style and beauty doctor. And so I had to blog for about a year and a half as my Urban, Glo Urban Glamour blog. I'm like, this doesn't really tell you what it is. And you know, at that time, people started, more blogs started popping up. And people's names were like couches and cowbells and lights and glamour or whatever kind of names they were coming up with. And I'm yeah. like, I need something that says more like exactly what I do. Right. So then I'm like, oh, the tagline, you're style and beauty doctor. So that's Ooh. how I came up with style and beauty doctor. I love it. One time someone gave me the feedback that, it's hard for them to find their um, new content because it's like so many posts. It's like, well, where do I go? Right. Um, so I found how to tweak it so it looked like a regular blog. Right. Um, but then I started noticing that people's blog designs were cleaner mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I have a friend who, a blogger friend who lives in LA. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Kristen. <laughs> who, um, anytime I need any, like, to brainstorm anything creatively, like, I usually talk to her. And right. she was like, well, you need to get this this and this person to um, design your blog. So I contacted that person. She was like an amazing, she was like so amazing. Like, because sometimes you have an idea in your head, but yeah. it's hard to, con to conceptualize it. It's, right. And it's hard to explain to someone what you want, which is probably why I have no blog staff and why I worked for myself for so long, because it's like, it's hard for me to tell you what I want. I know what I want. I might as well just do it myself. Right. Um, but she just did a, f a phenomenal job, and I just love the way the blog works. And so does she, did she use WordPress? What's the... Yeah, I use WordPress. I, okay. The last time I was on Blogger was probably like... 2008 or 2009 so okay. since then I've been you know WordPress so she just I don't know how she did it yeah maybe she had like a template or something or did whatever but it looks it, I like it oh like <laughs> thank you <laughs> okay so um just to piggyback off of that mm -hmm. Miss CEO H wants mm -hmm. to know have you considered hiring a staff to mm -hmm. help with your blog or do you prefer doing everything on your own? You kind of touched on that a little bit, but I mean, you have been doing this since 2007. 
And I feel as though having a staff or freelancers or interns even would definitely help you to, you know, tap into those creative ideas and things you want to do outside of what you're doing currently. Right, right. So here's the thing. So this will probably help explain for a lot of people. I'm a Virgo. Yeah, I'm a Virgo too. Wait, when's your see, birthday? When's August your birthday? 26th. Okay, see, September 14th. See, all right, I got go. you. So you might, you might know. I got you. I got you. So like I was saying, I'm like, I have all these ideas in my head, but it's like, it's hard for me to explain to you, not you, you, yeah, but yeah. you, what I want. So it's like, well, I might as well just do it myself. And at one time I did hire writers um, and it worked out nicely for a little bit. But what I find is that sometimes people like the allure of writing a blog or the allure of, right. oh, you get free beauty samples and you get to write about it. Right. And some people don't realize that there's a lot of work behind it. Right. Um, and then also with that, when it comes to reviews and things like that, because my site is so heavily Danielle and what Danielle thinks and, and, and so heavily written by me that I feel like things like beauty reviews need to be written by me because that's who people, because they're people who have read my blog since inception. Okay. And it's like, you know, to me, it's not, not to say that not to trust anybody else's opinion, right. but people are so, I feel like people are so used to Their having voice. my voice. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the next thing is, I do understand that in order for me to grow the way I want to, I do need to hire staff. So if you want, no. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm constantly trying to work on it. But again, as a Virgo, this is how the process happens. I'll sit down at the computer and like, okay, I need a staff. Um, I need to do this. And I'm like, oh, Zara has a sale. And it's like, <laughs> oh, wait, I wanted to edit some pictures. And then, oh, wait, no, I need a mail a newsletter. And then it's like so many things. Like my mind goes like this. And I try to make lists and things like that, so I need to, you know, kind of streamline things and get a little more organized, but I'm, I'm working on it. All right. It's like a personal project. Okay. Because <laughs> I definitely know that you have tons of great ideas, and people be lined yeah. up around the corner to help you, but finding the right The right people, yeah. Is the issue. And, and then the next thing is, too, it's not like I don't trust people, it's just that I don't want people to, like, you know, be like, yo, you crazy? Yeah. Um, you need to go somewhere. Like, I don't want to annoy people, you know? Yeah. So... So trying to find a, it's a personal project. Yeah. So I'm trying to find a fine line. <laughs> okay. So speaking of projects, mm -hmm. tell us what we can look forward to uh, with what's going on with you. I know that you recently started a little something, something with Burlington. Yes. Yeah, so Burlington, I'm doing some, um, I'm part of their Burlington Style Squad, which is really, really fun. Wait, give us the backstory in the Style Squad. Because mm -hmm. I always see other bloggers and hear their association with it. But yeah. like, how do you get to be a part of the squad? Well, they reached out to me, um, which is how a lot of brands, they you know, they just say, hey, Danielle, you know, we're in your inbox. Like, yeah. we want to do, <laughs> we want to do X, Y, Z. Um, and I always try to make sure that the brand that I work with kind of fits in with my own branding and as well as, you know, something I think that my readers are going to enjoy. Right. Um, so the Style Squad is basically um, a group of bloggers that go in Burlington stores and find like really cool things. Mm -hmm. And the thing with Burlington is there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of merchandise in their stores. So it's kind of hard sometimes, like you can get some really great deals. Like I found a designer, like somebody that was on the Miami Swim Week runway. Wow. Bathing suit in Burlington for $34.99. When this bathing suit, you know, retail was like $150. Wow. And it's like, you know, having someone like me and like the other blogs who have an eye for things, it's like you see a lot, but then we're able to say, hey, wait. Yeah. Those, these are some cool things, and these are some of the cool things that you should, you know, try out. So from now until the end of the year, I'll be doing like blog posts and videos. And, and what I like to do when I'm working with brands is also kind of tap into my audience to see what they want to see. Okay. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I asked my audience, you know, what kind of fashion posts would you like to see? So people came up with things like, being able to take a few pieces of clothing and make like a whole wardrobe out of it, which is really fun. Right. It's just, I just have to find out a cool way to present that. Right. Um, and people want to know like, you know, date night outfits and, you know, things like that. So it's always kind of fun when, you know, people can tell me what they want and I can actually give it to them. You know what else people want to know? What's, what's that? They want to know how to switch up their makeup from summer to winter and vice versa. Any yeah, tips on that? Yeah, Go lighter. <laughs> like, everything has to be lighter. Like, go lighter in consistency. I have oily skin and you could probably see that it's oily now because it's like burning up. <laughs> um, but you want to go lighter in consistency. Um, and it depends on the climate of where you live. Because in New York City, we have four... Well, sometimes we have four very distinct seasons. Sometimes it's just cold. But in the winter time, especially, like, I can't wear some of the things I wear in the summer. So in the winter, I'll go heavier. 
um, like a heavier lotion, a heavier moisturizer, a heavier, um, a more moisturizing foundation. Okay. And in the summertime, I'll kind of lighten up. Um, I'll have something more lightweight and, you know, they say less is more. Sometimes I still have a full face on in the summertime just because yeah. I can. Yeah. But, um, you know, just kind of want to make sure that you have the right type of formulas that will okay. last throughout the day. I love it. That really put things in perspective because whenever I hear people talk about like changing your makeup for the summer, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, yeah. I got a new color. I got to get new colors. And like, there's always some new fashion trend with like eye makeup and lipstick. So it's just like, what do you mean? And it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to try those things. And those are things that I do, you know, cover on the blog and things that you can kind of look up and see like what's new and things like that. Right. Um, but for the most part, I'm just kind of like, and, and a lot of this is because where I am in my age and I'm right. saying like I'm old or anything like that. Yeah. But you know, you, I know what I like. I yeah. know what kind of things that I'm going to want and I know how I want to like look. Right. So, um, for me, it's like what works for me may not work for you, but you know, if you want to do X, Y, Z, I can tell you how to get there, but it's just a matter of everyone being able to, to just be their own version of what they find beautiful. Ooh. Because I find that people don't allow you to do that a lot. I find that people will say, wait, oh, wait, you need Oh, you can't just skip over that. <laughs> that, was, that was a bar you just dropped right there. I forgot what I said already. You just want people to be their own be version, your own version of, of what you find is beautiful. What? Because a lot of times people will say, oh, that's too much makeup. Oh, that's not enough makeup. Yeah. Oh, stop wearing weave. Oh, wear your hair natural or yeah. whatever it is. And it's just like, let people be. Yeah. Let people do what makes them happy. I need that on a t-shirt or something. Yeah, let people be. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like that for a lot of topics. Like, just let people be. As long as I'm not killing anyone, I'm not harming anyone physically or emotionally. I mean, if you're emotionally harmed by my weave and my closure, then yeah. that's something you might want to talk to your therapist about. Yeah. But, um, yeah, just let people just let people be. There's so much beauty in women that it's like, don't pick. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much thank for talking you. with us. Thank you. And on behalf of everyone on the other side of that screen, I just want to <laughs> thank you for really, like, honestly and truly having the courage to turn your passion into your career because it's something that requires a lot of confidence and perseverance and you're doing it well, girl. Keep thank going. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everyone. I appreciate you so much. Thank you no so much for problem. having me. So where this can really we all cool. follow up with you? Tell them where. Make sure you go to thestyleandbeautydoctor.com and then all my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's some iteration of Style and Beauty Doctor. Well, if you guys enjoyed this interview as much as I did, I need you to let me know. Don't be stingy. Don't be cheap. Okay? I need you to like. I need you to you write this down. I need you to like. I need you to comment. I need you to subscribe. I need you to share with all of your friends. Until next time, it's Neffy Anderson with the Path Less Travel. Bye.